Welcome to the podcast from Temperance Town, the sexiest podcast of world renown. Tony grows a beard to hide his chin, swaps it with Earl, so it glistens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Download the pod, you won't get enough of these dapper chaps talking deadly fluff. In Hobo Gulch, they run a homeless mission, clanging and banging with the pentagram of kittens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. They enjoy their whiskey and local craft beer. By Odin's on Campubis, we give a cheer. He's a raccoon when he's booziest. Don't be a savage, be an enthusiast. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. On the frozen tundra, they call it a lock. Tony likes to masturbate in a sock. Brian pisses rocks cause it feels so great. I still don't know who the fuck is Tate. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. The boys will let you know when there's a Spurner. Due to male pattern baldness, they don't wear curlers. Stay salty, people, that's their closing line. And don't forget, have a beer, you'll be fine. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Hey enthusiasts, what's happening? This is Salty Language, episode 241. The feeling slightly like deaf podcast. (laughs) Just on the network or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't go as far as to say the hungoveriest podcast because I I really don't wouldn't say that's how I'm feeling. So Right. I was earlier. Yeah. But I mean, obviously as the day's gone on, I've I don't feel quite as shitty. Uh, yeah, it was, whoo, boy. That was an event last night, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me. It was, uh, it was, it was something, that's for sure. Whew. And, it, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have a ton of drinks, but those last couple were like the hammer of Thor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially yeah. that last one. Whew. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get all this. But we'll, we'll get we'll, to we'll, that. We'll, yeah, we'll fill y'all in on our <laughs> our escapades. You know, it's almost too bad this isn't episode 250 because that would have been 100 episodes ago we did the, but we'll get to that episode. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that part. Duh. Yeah, yikes. No, this one certainly isn't a weekend full of, but we'll get to that. So uh, yeah, 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 for sure. This is certainly more low-key. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so before we get to that, how was your week? Before that, <laughs> it, it was a good week. You know, went by fairly fast. wasn't uh, super exciting. I mean, we did go out Thursday for some. It's been a beer centric past couple of days, hasn't it? Now that I yeah, think about it. Yeah, it certainly has. Yeah, um, I did watch uh, that documentary that they talked about a while back on Angel's Awesome Podcast. That Sugar movie. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That is a uh, that's a fascinating documentary to watch if you don't want, ever want to eat sugar again. Yeah, I've been hoping that would show up on uh, Netflix or something so I could watch it, but it's on Amazon Prime if you got it. Unfortunately, I I, I don't. So, yeah, well, yeah. I'm you bumming. Son of a bitch. I'm bumming. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. You see the uh, things that people eat on an everyday basis, and then. Like today when I was at Kroger's, just walking around and seeing what drinks people are carrying with them, I'm like, you're all going to die. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You all have to be this. Well, it's true. It's like if, you, if you're if you in a store and you look at what people are, are carrying around with them, it's rarely water. Yeah. It, it's almost every time a coffee and or an energy drink and then yeah. or a, you know, a, a soda pop of some sort. It's right. funny because it used to be you would see people carrying around like a Coke or something like that. And that's now probably got pushed to almost third place behind yeah. coffee. And like I said, I was in Target the other day and all I saw were 
I saw three people carrying energy drinks. That was all I saw in there. I didn't see, even see any coffee. But it was right. kind of earlier in the day. so Or middle of the day, I mean, not earlier. Um, so I'm, I'm figuring that's what it was. You know, people hitting their post-coffee crash. So they're looking for that pick-me-up. So it's energy drink time. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they, they go over how, uh, you know, your body will signal... Your brain will signal your body, or your body will signal your brain. I'm sorry, God, my brain is not going on right now. <laughs> to be like, bitch, you need more sugar right now, yeah. basically. Right. It's, yeah, it's a pretty interesting movie to watch. Yeah, I want to check it out. I just, you know, it hasn't been available uh, to me through legal means, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, even, uh, you know. I well, I guess I shouldn't say that. I could buy, uh, probably rent or buy it. You know, through. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's probably on like iTunes. You could rent or something. Yeah, I should. I haven't even I was... thought about looking there. I should look because I don't. I, you know, I wouldn't mind. I, I'll pay five bucks or whatever, four bucks, whatever it is, to rent it. Cause, right. Yeah. You know. But like, uh, you know, when I was grocery shopping earlier today, I I was basically walking through the store like a zombie. Yeah. Because death, right? And uh, I was like, "Oh, I need a coconut water," because that's usual. My hungover, mm -hmm. you know, it's refreshing. And they and there's these ones that they're like coconut water and espresso, and they're like coco loco, and they're delicious. Yeah. But I just, you know, I I've been a notorious label reader for the past like four months now. Yeah. And I'm like, let me see, let me look at the label on this bitch. Twenty grams of sugar. Wow. In that little box of coconut water. Damn. That that is like motherfucker. That that is like Coke level sugar. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think Coke has somewhere around twenty or twenty four grams of sugar in a can. I might be wrong, but I think I'm somewhere near right. So wow. Yeah. So I end up just going with a standard, just regular coconut water. Yeah. Wow. Which still had sugar in it, but not nearly as much. Right. Now, I would assume there's probably some of that that would be a natural sugar to some extent, right? Because yeah, of coconut, but... but... It's in juice, it's still not... Yeah, but damn. Yeah, you need that fiber of the fruit or yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know? oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I doubt they're grinding the pulp up and giving you that. Well, the stuff I bought had coconut pulp oh, in it. Oh, okay. okay. You know? Yeah. Didn't matter. I ended up being... Well, I'll get to it. <laughs> But we'll get to that. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Oh, but um, it, I had that. I watched that. Um, uh, there's definitely something I noticed that I found fascinating. And this is by no means a Q to W, but it's just something I noticed I did. Mm -hmm. So when I go into a men's room, right? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm going to take a leak at the urinal, I'm at the urinal, all's well. If the urinal is occupied, I'll go into the stall. But I'll lock the door behind me, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is funny how many guys don't even close the door. Like, they'll just go in, and that way I think it's so that people can see, you know, occupado, basically. Yeah, um, if the door's closed, I mean. Yeah, if the door's closed and locked or whatever, people would be like, well, there's someone in there, obviously. So, you know. So, I don't know. I, I was sitting there, you know, peeing, and I'm like, why did I lock the door behind me? And I realize <laughs> I do it every time, and it's like. I stand out in the open. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But if I'm in here, it's like my sanctuary. <laughs> it's so weird. Right. Yeah. It's not like you're doing it because you're afraid of, like, surprise butt sex or something, you know? Yeah. Or so, I don't know. Because otherwise like... you'd never use a urinal, you know? Right. Because, I mean, you know, obviously you take your pants down to your ankles, as a gentleman does. And then, well, of you course. know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Pants at the ankles, and I lift my shirt up right in my armpits. <laughs> Of course, of course. You're like a giant toddler in the front yard. <laughs> That's how it's done, yeah. Oh, well, hell yeah. Really embarrassing when you're walking the dog and do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to keep covering up her marks. I'm like, this is my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason she has to keep going outside is to, uh, you know, counter what you've done, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, though. I don't know why uh, you would do that. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'd be curious to... Uh, I'm trying to think if I do you know, that. Hear, hear from people if they do that, too. Or you know what? I, I think I do that, and I think the reason I do it is so that I don't get hit in the back with the door. Oh, that, that could make sense. Yeah, I could see that. 
I'm because tr- I, I was trying to think. I haven't done it in a while. I, I'm pretty sure I do close it and lock it, and it's usually for that reason. You know, what's fun is if somebody realizes there's someone peeing in there, and then you know they've got to use it for other purposes, and you know, you hear them like, like verify masturbation, right? You hear them like yelling at you from outside on the, you know, like I was in there, I like peeing one day because all the urinals were full, and I don't mean like. Oh, every other urinal. I mean, like there were five urinals and they were all full up and I'm like, well, I got, you know, so I walk into the, you know, I lock the door and there's a guy outside that's like, come on, man, I got a shit, (laughs) you know, (laughs) that's hilarious. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm not pinching it off or something. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like (laughs) you got a rubber band. Yeah. It's like use the garbage can to stream off with. Right. It's like use the garbage can like any other civilized guy would. Yeah. There's a sink. (laughs) <laughs> that was wrong with you exactly I mean come on jeez oh man can you imagine if they had those like motorized sinks or you know the sensors oh. on them <laughs> right <laughs> I mean maybe you get a nice wash while you're going or something I don't know it, that seems horrifying yeah it does doesn't it? <laughs> in its own special way yeah <laughs> that's the cleanest I've ever been afterwards <laughs> right like Oh, man. So that, uh, and then we, we've had a rash at, at work of people fucking stealing other people's lunches all of a sudden. Yeah, that's weird. I know. And that's like, it's a whole like, you know, I get it if you're hungry. Yeah. Okay. But there's got to be a better way to go about it. Yeah. Because people are getting like fucking flaming pissed at work. Well, yeah. I well, mean, you know, and the thing is, either shit's gone. Well, yeah, and you know, there's some people who don't have the money to go buy lunch after their lunch comes up missing. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, yeah. uh, I used to take my lunch when I worked at the video store and stuff, and the reason I usually did that was I'd go buy, you know, cheap frozen food because I could afford it, and then if it came out missing, I was like, wow, I don't have any money on me, you know. <laughs> Like, right. I'm bumming for the next seven hours or six hours, you know, so I could imagine they'd be pretty upset. I mean, plus, like I said, I mean, I get it if they're just hungry. Yeah. But it's, I've, if they're just being dicks, it's like, you really want to be at working with this person side by side? What else could they be stealing? Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and it's one of those things that's hard. That bothers me. It's really hard to prevent it, too. Because unless you put a camera in the, you know, where all, wherever the lunches are in the break room or whatever it is, I don't know. I, I haven't been there. So, yeah, you know, that's about the only way you could really find out who it is unless someone kind of, you know, stops it. Just put a nanny cam in there and figure it out. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Get one of them nanny cams stored in the corner. Yeah. Or like or I noticed the teddy bear. Or, you know, like I mentioned before to you, you know, just uh, start lacing your food with arsenic and, you know, sooner or later you'll figure out who's stealing your lunch. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> just let Someone nature take will, its uh, course. <laughs> Someone will uh, just, you know, <laughs> drop dead. Yeah. First person at work that keels over, probably. Again, you know, there's room for some error there, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, somebody maybe just has, you know, some heart disease running in the family or something. But meanwhile, the thief hears that and they're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they took the hit. All right. Yeah. Everyone thinks it was Martha. And the next day, lunches go <laughs> disappearing again. I'm like, damn right. it. <laughs> uh, man. man I don't know. It was, that was basically the extent of my week. Not super exciting. Yeah. Uh, we got Thursday. We we got to talk about, and obviously we got yesterday, of course. Yeah, yeah. My Dude, week about... wasn't wasn't super exciting either. I did, you know, I was finally able to go back to therapy this week, which was nice because it's been like a month since I was able to go. Um, right. You know that was, you know, very helpful. And uh, that's I'm trying to think what else I've done this week. Uh, not been able to go get the Wi-Fi extender that I need to get, and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is that. We've had to put off. We couldn't record Friday like we normally do because our the internet connection was so awful that Skype just would not hold for us. So that was pretty sweet. Skype is a fickle bastard. You know sometimes. what we could have done was what we should have done was that you know just called each other, just put it on speakerphone, and then I could have taken my old iPhone and just recorded it. 
and just put it up as like a gorilla recording. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, pump up the volume style recording. Yeah, yeah. But like this is the you know something like you know put up some make up some story about how again about it being like one of the lost tapes or something. <laughs> right, you know. Or we should have just thrown our phone in the middle of the table last night and recorded. <laughs> yeah, I mean that could have worked too. So Probably could, would have been a terrible idea. Yeah, oh well, for sure. But we'll get to that. So yeah, that was about it for me. I can't really think of much else. I, oh, actually, no, I do have one thing I forgot about. Um, well, kind of two, but one especially was I went to the library because uh, I had a book on hold there. And right. as I'm walking in, there's a uh, there's two women sitting there at a booth. They got this big like board, and they're you know they're promoting Jesus. And I'm uh, I just you know head down, walk past it, go into the library, and realize that um, I waited too long to go get my book, and the book had been sent back. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so i was like whoops you know so you know what are you gonna do no big deal i haven't finished this other book that i got anyway so you know it's not not a huge deal so did you sit in on the jesus meeting then no but on my way back out there was this older guy that was standing there and all i hear him say is you know who you should go talk to my neighbors because they're they're lesbians they need to hear about what jesus says and it took everything in my power to not just step and sidekick him. Like, mm, or just enough. put him through the table. You Head know? kick. Uh, no, he was too tall for that. Oh. He, this dude's probably like 6'4". So, and I don't have the kind of, you know, hops to get up near his head. I'd have to, like, take a knee out so he'd have to, you know, you know, get down on a knee. And then I could head kick him, you know. Or, or you just awkwardly, like, wheel, wheel in one of those little, like, set of stairs. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you see in the, uh, like, grocery stores and stuff. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> or I just bring him a chair. I'm like, here you go, sir. Here's the chair. Oh, thanks. You know, he sits down, then I head kick him. <laughs> here you go, sir. I brought this nice, cozy chair for you. Head kick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or it could go a different way. I could just hit him in the knees with the chair. I don't know when he goes down, head kick, you know, whatever. Right. You know, Van Daminator him, whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you got to do what you got to do. It's it would just, be a perfect time for a folding chair, though. You are correct. Yeah. Now, I will say this about the two women that were there was they weren't Let's so get... much. No, they weren't so much in agreement with him. They were like, eh, we really don't like to get into people's business. And, you know, more like we're just here because we want people to, you know, bring Jesus into their lives. We're not trying to get anyone to, you know. <laughs> basically like we're not here to spread hate <laughs> you right. know, the kind of a thing so and that was about all i heard as i you know left because if i didn't it would have been deli rage inside that place and you know i like the library i don't want to be you know like banned from maybe, there maybe he's just upset with his neighbors because they never invite him over that's for probably game that's probably all it is yeah, yeah. i just I just don't understand why people can't just keep their nose out of other people's business like that, you know? Yeah, I don't get it either. Because I'm sure all the time they're, you know, ruining his life with their lesbian ways. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Just like he goes out to get his mail and they're just scissoring in oh, the yard. Oh, just, it's unbearable. Oh, Jesus. Again? Again? Yeah, oh, it's just. Right there by the mailbox. Yeah, spraying up the garden hose. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, like there are two, like two wild dogs just doing it on the front lawn. Yeah, it's just, exactly. Ah, man, calling animal control on them. <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. It's just like, ugh. So, yeah, I, I just, like I said, I just put my head down. I just shook my head and just kept moving on. I was like, ugh. Yeah, sometimes it's that's why half the time now, if I go into like stores or anything like that by myself, mm. I just throw my earbuds in. Yeah, that's see, that should have been my move. Um, but you know, normally you go into the library, there's like you know, like it's in you've been to that library, you know, it's like when you walk in, yeah. there's that really big lobby area, it's yeah. rather enormous. <laughs> And then there's the library, and it was in the the lobby, you know. But like I said, you know, I, I all the credit in the world to the women because they weren't, 
you know, they weren't sitting there going, you know what? You're absolutely right. The Lord says, but nah, nah. they were like, yeah. uh, we're really not here to, you know, we're, we're not here to make people really like change their lives. As far as that goes, we just, you know, they sound like they're from probably some sort of a, a fairly progressive church is what I think right. they were from. So I was, <laughs> I was just like, well, good on them. Cause if I would have heard them say, you know what? You're right. I might've stopped and got into an argument. But <laughs> uh, wow, I I just don't understand why some people, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, why they think they got to get all involved like that shit. Yeah, I know, especially when it's something that doesn't really hurt your life. You know, it's different yeah. if they were hurting somebody. You know, like if they were scissoring in the street and someone had to like, you know, to avoid them went into a tree or something like that. Then sure, I mean, you know. <laughs> Right in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, I'm using like a deer analogy. You know, a deer runs out in front of you and you swerve and hit a tree. It's like, if that were the case, sure. But it's like they're people and they just live their lives. They generally don't do anything that's odd or deviant around other people just like anyone else does. And anything they do within their home is probably no more deviant than what anyone else does within their home. So who really, you know, why should you care? It's true. It's so stupid. Yeah. Especially Somehow, to take time yes. out of your day to complain to somebody else to try to get them to go to their house to change them. You know? Like, right. wow. Yeah, I agree. The uh, Yeah, that's true. I need you to come over. I need you to... I know you're probably volunteering for this for your church, but I actually need you to change venues. <laughs> yeah. And talk to the two women I live next door that I'm assuming are lesbians. Yeah. It's like, sorry, man, this isn't like 19, like 30. We don't uh, perform exorcism on people who are different than others. Right. You know, it's like we're a more accepting world. You know, I mean, how does he how does he know they're actually lesbians? I don't know. You know, I mean, unless they're like, you know, probably yell at him every morning. We're lesbians. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A breeder. Maybe he, it's probably more that he's like hit on one of them and they refused it. And now they're lesbians, you know, like guys on the internet. Yeah. You know, if a guy hits on a woman on the internet and she's like, Hey, stop it. Immediately. She's a bitch and she's a lesbian. That's just how stupid internet guy logic works. So maybe he's just like that. How could I forget about that? Yeah. Maybe he's just an internet troll. I don't know. I that's enough about him, though. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, uh, I wonder just what sort of miserable existence you right? have that that's your priority. Exactly, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, we just talked about it for 10 minutes, but... <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's good for us to make fun of. Right. To be honest. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I was listening to uh, old Billy Redface this past week. And, uh, right. you know, he was talking about how he went to check out new music and yeah. it kind of got me thinking a little bit, you know, cause he makes a comment about how he's been listening to like the same music for ever. Mm-hmm. And it makes me, you know, it made me think a little bit about it, about how true that is, you know, about how once you kind of find your groove in music, most people don't leave that groove, you know, right. like, you know, um, and a lot of times it ends up being whatever was popular when you were in high school or college, you know, in that yeah. age group. And then once you're past that, all music is garbage from that point on, you know, <laughs> and uh, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, how often do you find yourself looking for new music? Uh, honestly, I do it fairly regularly. Yeah. Because with, you know, stuff like, you know, we got Amazon Prime, audio, you know, music, you know, Spotify, it makes it real easy when new yeah. shit comes out. Because it's like, hey, here's new stuff that you can listen to. I kind of wonder if the, the generations going forward now are going to be different about that. Because, you know, you used to have to, like, we've talked before about how for us to find new music, like when we had Jono on for The Enthusiast, we were talking to him about, like, for us to find new music, you had to go into, like, stores and just look through music and go eh, and give things a try or it was all word of mouth or 
you just had or, to go to shows. Those rare music stores where you could actually listen to the yeah, CD before you right. bought it. You know, or like, you know, we used to go to a lot of like $10 cheap shows and then we'd be like, oh, this band's pretty cool and then go look for their music, you know. And Right. Uh, now, like you said, with like Spotify and stuff like that, you can listen to like full albums and stuff, you know, right at, like right after they hit. So you can, you know... Um, find new artists like i don't know how many times i've done that like someone will have a new album out and i'm like i don't really want to buy it and then i listen to it and i'm like oh this is actually pretty good kind of a you know right like i'm curious but not curious enough that i want to lay down ten dollars on them you know right so it it was i I was just kind of thinking about that and i was wondering i had the same kind of thought you did with the you know the um streaming sites and whatnot now you know I wonder if younger people are going to be like, I, I look for new music all the time versus people that are like Burr's age, which is, you know, 10-ish years older than us. Is in, Right. You know, kind of thinking we're going to be the transition yes. and then people younger than us are going to be the ones going, I don't see what the big deal is. New music's all around us. You know? Right. So I just thought it was kind of an interesting well, point like, he brought uh, up. Like I've been... um watching this uh viceland uh series right Mm. called fuck that's delicious (laughs) (laughs) yeah and it's uh the dude who who hosts is action bronson he's a rapper okay yeah but i i I had never heard of him before fuck that's delicious okay i've heard of him i couldn't tell you one song is but i've heard the name well i I just recently started like i'm like i enjoy his his vice series because he just you know is it him when he's traveling around, you know, on tour, just eating at places? Because he used to be a chef. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm like, I like the series, and the dude's pretty, you know, he entertains me. I'm like, I might as well check out his music, and sure enough, it's on Amazon Prime. Right. And I, I'm digging it. I'm enjoying his shit. Right. So it's like, it's a, and it's another way, I guess, is the whole multimedia experience. Yeah, exactly. That, that you get these days. Well, yeah, because you... You know, I don't think most shows are, uh, you know, you're not getting introduced to music, uh, musicians, I should say that way. But it's also, there's a lot of TV shows using, um, music like that too. Uh, right. you know, like there's, uh, it was one of the things that I saw on, uh, was it on Twitter or somewhere where like American Horror Story this season after the first couple episodes, there were so many people asking what this song or this song were from the episode because they right. just love some of the music choices that were being picked. And, you know, a lot of TV shows are, are really, um, you know, they're not just using like, um, you know, orchestral music. They're using, you know, they're pulling songs and a lot of them are being pulled from like, no, you know, out of obscurity almost. And then people are like, oh, my God, that's so, you know, right. oh, who did that? You know, that kind of stuff. So that, that's that been kind of cool, too. You know, so it, it's well, it's an interesting, um, like you were saying, it's just an interesting way to uh, discover music just from, like, TV shows and stuff now that I don't think I really did much before. Oh, well, shit, you know what really got me into music for a long time? Hmm. Different music, I should say. Uh, stuff like Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, yeah. Madden. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because before you got tired of listening to the soundtrack, you were like, hey, this song's pretty yeah, good, yeah. and you'd look up more by that artist, which I'm sure was the point of that, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you, it's basically like giving you a sampler, and you're like, hey, you know, this, yeah. This is, isn't bad at all. Right. Or when you watch Don't stuff like, if I do. you watch stuff like the X Games on TV or something, because they play all sorts of bands, you know, throughout the, you know, the weekend or whatever. And, you know, right. I, yeah, that's why I said those were the ways we found them. And now, like you said, now you can find things, um, you know, you get music brought to you in such such a different way it's almost like hand delivered to you now well it, it, i mean because even yeah. you know like spotify has the you know best new best of new music or whatever it's playlist yeah and you just you know that's all the new shit and if it's good you'll you know whatever yeah. i mean I've, I've definitely listened to some and be like this is garbage <laughs> but there's other stuff I'm like wow i, I kind of dig it you know mm-hmm. and at least it lets you you know favorite it or whatever yeah true 
Yeah. Although I certainly don't want to pay for premium Spotify. No. I like it, but I don't like it that much. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's, that's the one thing I'll say is it's, it's one of those things. It's one of the things about like, um, when I listen to like Pandora, it's one of the things that I kind of hate is there's sometimes when I'm listening to it and I'm like, man, they play a lot of the same stuff over and over. And that's why at times, like, I'll go through and even songs that I've, like, you know, given thumbs up to, I'll remove it <laughs> so yeah. that it won't play those more so, you know. And I've I've actually been given thumbs down to songs that I've, you know, like, man, I've heard this too much kind of a thing. So that's why I kind of I actually uh, installed Spotify on my one iPod or iPad the other night because I was like, I miss just being able to listen to like I don't have my my own music right now because of my computer crashing. So, oh, right. Yeah. You know, but that's what I used to do. iTunes used to have radio stations. Um, yeah. I don't like the fact that do they still have iTunes radio or they phased I it out. I think they just phased it out. Yeah. And I, I was so disappointed because there was a few of them like rock stations and stuff that were like nothing but new music. And I right. used to just, I every once in a while I just jump in there and I'd listen to them and, you know, I'd write down names of bands and stuff, you know, that I'd want to go check out uh, other stuff from. So, you know, now I got to find other ways of doing that. So, right. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, I like, so I just thought that was kind of a, an interesting point by Burr because you almost do have to kind of throw yourself, especially I think if you're an old, you're older, like, in our age bracket, I think you have to kind of throw yourself out of your comfort zone. You know, oh, for sure. Like I said, yeah. I think if you're younger, it's it's all going to be more native to you because it's just how you live. Right. But for a lot of people more our age, I don't know how much people our age search for new music that much, you know? Right. So, yeah. I, just hey, it was kind I of... think you got to just be, I mean, you can be stuck in your rut and listen to the same shit or, you yeah. know. But he's totally right. It's like, how many times do you want to? I mean, I like, I love Led Zeppelin, but how many times do you want to listen to that same song? Exactly. You yeah. know? So, yeah. After a while, you're like, ah, I need something new to listen to. You know? It's like, especially like if with an iTunes where it shows you your, like your play counts on songs. And you're like, oh, yeah. You're like, geez, I've listened to this song thousands of times now. Maybe I should get something new in here. Like, hmm, clearly I love this song. Mm hmm. Exactly. Ugh, so, yeah. Times. so yeah, that that was the only that was the stuff I had for the week. So Well let's uh let's talk about, you know, our little Thursday rendezvous. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. I I crashed <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. So we uh hold on, I'm taking my head set off, scratching my scratching my noggin. Um we ended up going out uh, Thursday for some beers, and apparently it was uh, supposed to be what you, soundboard team, my wife, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, and I think I pretty much invited myself along. Yes, that was the way it was uh, told to me because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's nice every once in a while to go out on a school night and act a fool. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We highly encourage <laughs> kids to go out on school nights and drink. Fuck yeah! Take that, teacher. <laughs> Yeah, down with homework. I got my pencil. <laughs> Give us someone to write. <laughs> oh, my. So we hit the, our local watering hole, Nick and Jimmy's, up in Temperance there, which was uh, slightly disappointed by their beer selection, to be honest. Yeah, it was this time. Yeah, normally yeah. pretty strong, but this time they didn't have a lot of stuff on tap that was... Um... I don't know. They didn't have a lot of Michigan beers, and they didn't have many IPAs, and it was it was kind of an odd selection. I don't know if we caught them in a transitional point or what was going on, but yeah, it was a little rough for us that night. It was tough picking was. beers. Yeah, we still made it work. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we just couldn't really try new stuff. It was that's all it was. It was just that it was like you know, okay, I'll just drink this that I've had before, and you know. Right. There just wasn't anything because, you know, I had unfortunately missed Scotty Karate by like a week, which yeah. made me sad panda because I didn't get to have any of it this year. And now I'm extra sad. So. 
I mean, you never know. You might randomly find a four pack somewhere, but yeah, it's, the chances not. are so low now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find some place that's like half sketchy. Then I'll probably find one there, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and honestly, if I found it now, I would still get it because it's, it's close enough. Oh yeah. It'd still be delicious. Yeah. If I found it in like six months, I'd be like, eh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm, questionable at best. Yeah. So I'd still buy it. Who am I kidding? But I, I, one of my highlights for our Thursday was the oddest couple I've ever seen in my life. Because he had... Uh, <laughs> I had to stop. Had his, I'm like, who is he? T- oh, yeah, them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He had this gentleman that was almost basically as wide as he was tall. Mm-hmm. He was a big fella, mm-hmm. short. Mm-hmm. And then he was with this woman who... I mean, she was definitely older. She was definitely a cougar because of her cougar shirt, which Rawr. is hilarious, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. But for her age and whatnot, she was fairly attractive. And they were just, oh, just making it. It was oh, disturbing. It was something. I mean, yeah. I mean, it looked like she, like, might have had, like, like butter under her nose or something, the way he was attacking her. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, well, I think what was going on is they were each trying to consume the other one's head. That's the way they were making out. If you need an yeah, image it was of it, disturbing. Yeah, at best. <laughs> it was something. Yeah, yeah. So here's Man, a quick question for you. Yes. Are you still a cougar if you're in a relationship where you're making out like that in public with a guy that you're clearly in a relationship with? Like it seems like being a cougar is where you're not really nailed down. You know, like you're still nimbly bimbly, right? This is true. I mean, it seems like once you, I mean, maybe you don't wear the cougar shirt on the town when you're, once you're, you know, locked down a little bit. Right. I, I don't, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just she, me. Uh, maybe she's just like keeping her options open. Yeah. I think what it was, was he was trying to, you know, he knew I was in the room and how much cougars love me. So I think he was trying to alpha the situation. This this could be true. Yeah, I mean, mean you you know, I really think you need a cougar bait shirt. Yeah. Meanwhile, I just played it cool because I was like, whatever. You know, I was there right. for beer drinking, and yeah, it didn't really raise much hell. But uh, there was wasn't much hell raising uh, no. Thursday. It was just a warm up for Saturday. Uh, oh boy, was it? And <laughs> we had to stretch. <laughs> Let's see here. Just because I had to do a quick Google search, Brian. Mm-hmm. There is indeed cougar bait shirts. <laughs> <laughs> nice you should completely have one of these i don't think i should but it's true i don't know that i need to all right fine we'll get you the cougar hunter <laughs> yeah that's better <laughs> <laughs> oh there's my reality show forget it <laughs> nice cougar hunter with brian bang, so bang. Is on the outdoor <laughs> channel like oh no <laughs> Is there a channel for love? That would be awesome if it was on the outdoor channel, but I'm not hunting animals. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, in the bar, yeah, just trying to bang older women. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, I'll be using finger guns all the time because you know, well, of course, yeah, it, that'd be like your signature thing, right? Like when they're advertising <laughs> your show, the like the cougar hunter logo would come up, and then you'd pop up in the corner of the screen, do right. a bang bang, Naturally. finger guns, right? Yeah, I got to be careful how I do it though. I don't want Mick Foley to like sue me for gimmick infringement or something. Well, what if what if instead of like doing like the Mick Foley like we're doing to each other on Skype? Yeah, you kind of like like shoot him like forward like you're in a duel and then you holster him. Ooh, nice. I like that. Yeah. Well, right. that's a little Shooter McGavin. I got to be careful. I have to come up with something uh, that's all mine. But well, yeah, I forgot about Shooter McGavin. Maybe I'll do yeah. the old. I'll do the eyebrow one. You know, where I, like, you know, comb the eyebrows down and into the finger guns or something, you know. Right. Whatever. We'll figure it out. Figure it out, indeed. So, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, those two were just, man, that was something else. I, I, I was honestly slightly disturbed. Yeah. By the, the way they were just facing each other. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird though because the one time I turned and you know when you were like you should you should look at this and I turned and I was like Jesus it's like it was like they were sending a signal to the whole bar like look we're making out like kind of a thing you know 
But it was just yeah. like the word. You know what it reminded me of is like on Saturday Night Live when they do a sketch with people making out. And it's always oh, like the worst, just, you know. It's so forced and weird. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. So, I don't know. Uh, whatever. That is accurate. It's very accurate because yeah. that's it was, it was just weird. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I don't know what the hell that was, but yeah, there was while the, you know, the Gross. guy, was, yeah, well, you know, the guy needed some inspiration while he was playing shuffleboard, you know, so. Well, this is true. I mean, I don't even think, I don't think they're playing shuffleboard very well. No. Either. Although it made me want to play shuffleboard. A little bit. You know? Yeah. It's been too long since I, uh, since I played some shuffleboard. Just because you wanted to win and then make out with the cougar. <laughs> Was that the prize? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah it could be worse. Could have to make out of him. <laughs> Maybe that was the prize. I don't know. <laughs> that would have turned like, out weird. He'd, he'd give me the old, like, did you have spots of shrimp? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You'd have had to, uh, he would have had to get you a chair first. Oh, God. Yeah, because you're too tall for him. So. Oh, I would have bent down for that immaculate <laughs> being. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Gross. He gets you a chair, gives you a lap dance, and then you guys make out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> lap dance. <He's, laughs> the, the whole chair just collapses. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it's in Michigan, so there can be contact. So, yeah, I was like, it's Ohio. That you have to. There's like that three-foot rule or whatever, I think. But forgot we were in Michigan, so. I do, I do believe they call it the, wow, what a bummer rule. Yeah. It's like, oh, if you serve beer, you got to have pasties and no nudity, and you also have to stay three feet away or whatever. It's like, why yeah, are we worst, here? Yeah. Worst strip clubs ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like having, you know, being in prison and getting a stripper delivered to you. Like, just on the other right. side of the glass, you know? <laughs> For sure. Like, this is like, uh, It's like midnight run or whatever. Oh, Billy. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, that's a nice timely reference, sir. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, oh, I love the timely references. Topical. <laughs> Topical. <Ooh. laughs> it's what I do, Brian. I know. It's I know. what I do. I know. I know. Oh man, yeah, that was that was something for sure. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, had a, had a few beers. It was a pretty uh, re- relaxed evening. Your uh, standard Thursday evening, although it was. Way busier in there than I would have thought it would have been. Yeah, yeah. Cause like, when, like when Jeannie dropped me off because she was going to grab you next, I was like, God damn, this parking lot is packed. Yeah. And then I walked in and, I mean, at least that one half of the bar was open because, you know, I mean, if I have a choice, if we're going to go to the bar to have beers, I would want to sit at the bar. I don't want a table. What am I, a fucking civilized person? I want to be out there like a Viking, damn it. Right. Yeah, I, it was uh, pretty busy. It was one of the busier times I've seen it for the time frame. Usually right. it doesn't get like that until, you know, closer to nine or so. But it was it was pretty busy. I was uh, very, very surprised. Yeah, same here. I was, uh, it's a little weird, but mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll accept it. Yeah, hopefully that'll run them out of some of the yucky beer they had and you know so they can move on to some better stuff right although i doubt it because i saw a lot of beers that i could see through getting poured so and bastards well you know i mean despite the moves craft beer is making yeah it's gonna be a long time before it's if that's ever becomes the norm well it's yeah i mean part of that though if nothing else will just be the cost that's true. Because you know, oh yeah, people are like, what? You paid $15 for four beers? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I did. Like, I paid $15 and got 12 or 15 beers, you know? It's, yeah. like, it's like... Because one this one bottle of beer is, like, 13% alcohol. Yeah. And it tastes, it tastes like, you know, angel drool. <laughs> you mean that guy that cut your yard? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. He's delicious. I'm kidding. <laughs> he hates it when he's got to do my yard because I just come spring out of the bushes and tackle him. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Pants around your ankles, shirt up to your uh, armpits. <laughs> That's true. It's Damn hard it. to spring like that. Have you ever seen a duck spring? <laughs> it's the weirdest. 
Oh man, that's just awful. Um, <laughs> that's terrible, Tony. Terrible. Uh yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, it's, so it, it's going to be tough for for you know uh, craft beers are going to be tough to you know kind of hit that second market cuz that market's always been there though you know cuz it's like even when before craft beers were really the thing when everyone was drinking you know budweisers when stuff like heineken was considered the upper crust of the beers you'd go to a bar and get like oh they have heineken i'll have you know like that oh, kind of a thing pinkies up gentlemen yeah basically it's like you know there was <laughs> the heineken level cuz heineken did a lot of bars were like three bucks and then Budweiser yeah. was like two fifty and then they always had the next level down beers which were whatever was on special your moose heads, natty lights, all those kind of beers were like two bucks. And those right. beers are the ones you see people drinking because they're the cheapest, you know? So and they're also usually the most watered down, which I've yeah. never understood because they're like, oh but I can get and it's like, yeah, but it's gonna take you a lot more of them to get drunk. If your goal is to get drunk, step up at least a little bit and then, you know. Yeah, plus they taste better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I understand there's a place for the watery beers like that because, like, you know, on a hot day or if you're out on the boat, those beers are perfect because mm -hmm. you really shouldn't be getting drunk. <laughs> well, yeah, plus, I mean, man, if you're knocking back, like, 10 percenters on a hot day, it's going to end badly. Oh, yeah, I've been victim of yeah. this several Ooh, times. Me too, me too. Yeah. yeah. It's so not a I, good I understand the, the need of having a beer like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's why they make all day. Right. I agree. All day? All day. <laughs> Damn it, I really need tea. I need to get that recorded so I have it on my board. Yeah, that absolutely yeah. should be on the soundboard. Yeah, I that mean, it's. It, I guess I'll settle with. Oh yeah, good enough. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Good enough. I like it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So I don't know anything else from Thursday. That's about all I got. No, I mean it was it was a fun evening, mm -hmm. and I was the the biggest hit for me was Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, back there. <laughs> yeah, that was certainly something. All right. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, it was definitely something. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we, I guess we can jump right to Saturday. Wow, if you couldn't understand Tony's like said we of could, this podcast probably. Yeah, pretty much. Um we went last night we met up at uh Mutt's, which you've heard us refer to Mommy Bay before. It's a sports bar right below it. Um or well, it's actually what two floors down, I think, whatever. Ah, it's all in the same building. Yeah. So whatever. Uh... Yeah. And uh, it was funny, though, because, like, when T and I got there, like, you know, the far parking lot, the one that's actually across the street from Mutt's. But yeah. for Mommy Bay, it's the far parking lot. All the parking lots had cars in them, including that far parking lot. And we're like, oh, boy, you know, because we're thinking it's it's slammed, you yeah, know. That's, yeah, I think that's it's, the same thought we had when yeah, we got there. It's Saturday. It's 7 o'clock or just after 7 uh, hockey game, you know, downtown, you know, we're thinking, oh boy, this is going to be a mess tonight. Great. And then we walk into Mutt's and there's like 12 people in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was crazy. There's huh? like no one in there. Yeah. I mean, we never made our way up to the brew pub. It could have been packed upstairs. We didn't yeah. know it. Yeah. It was just kind of funny. It's so weird at that place how sometimes we've even gone to Mommy Bay when we've gotten there. And we look at all the cars and we're like, oh, man, you know, and we walk in and we walk right up to a table like there's no wait. And we're like, all right. Like, yeah, you know, it's just it's such a weird building because there's different um, there's what, four different places in there. Well, there's uh, well, some are only open like, yeah, because there's a uh, cafe that's open during the week for like lunch and stuff. Yeah. And there's a coffee slash patisserie shop that's open in the morning. And then there's Mutt's, which is the bar, the brew pub itself, and then Rockwell's, which is the high end steakhouse. Right. And I mean, Rock that's a lot of like. Yeah. And then there's also apartments in there, which yeah. is fascinating. Right. So Rockwell's is open, Mommy Bay was open, and, or the brew pub was open, and Mutt's was open. I, Mutt's. I don't. And I guess if you want to count Rockwell's Lounge, too. Right. And realistically, I guess there could have been um, 
if they had a, a party in there. Oh yeah, because there was like banquet rooms, and right? Stuff, so yeah. there could have been that too. That may have been where, honestly, that may have been where some of the people who came in later that were dressed all nice came from. That's you know, true too. Yeah. Who knows? But anyway, so you know, we get in there. There's no one in there, which is awesome because you know it's nice to not have a bunch of people in a place, especially when you first get there. That way, you right. know, you're like, excellent, we have places to sit or whatever, and you know. Well, I kept, like, throwing elbows wildly like Charles Barkley just to keep people away from the bar so you guys have places to sit. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. as it should be. Yeah. Including uh, in into a waitress's face, but we'll get to that. Oh. Or a bartender's <laughs> face, I should say, yeah. Um, Her so hair was so soft. <laughs> we get to, uh, we get there, and Tony's like, oh, yeah, I'm having, you know, a dream and demon which was a, you know, a really weird beer and I still don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Although it was a it was a Belgium strong ale, so it's kind of fruity. Mhm. But it 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 was definitely strong cuz it was coming in at like a 1075. Yeah. percent. Yeah, that's, that's how I started uh, the night. Yeah. If for an opening pint, that's pretty hefty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, an opening pint on a fairly empty stomach, maybe not my best move, but you know, whatever. Right. Oh man, it, that's why I say it was such a weird beer, though. Like I couldn't decide if I liked it or if I didn't. All I knew was at the end of the first one, I was like, "I'm not getting another one of these because, first of all, it was strong, and second of all, I I just I, it wasn't something I loved, but I didn't hate it. You know, I was just trying to decide where I fell on that one, and I just I don't know. It was funny because later in the night, you know, when. Uh, you know, I I got half of one set in front of me because it was an accidental pour. So, <laughs> oh right, I was like, okay, and so I ended up drinking another half. It's and good to be friends with the bartender. Boy, whew. <laughs> that one I felt. The first one I didn't really feel. The second half of one because it was where it was in the night. Oh boy, um, but yeah, that was that was a really interesting beer though. So, right, but yeah, you know, so. Then our pal, that was when you, me, and T were there, and then our, our buddy Squirrel joined us. That was a good time. Yeah, that was a, had a blast. We had Bloody Marys together, which was weird at that time of night. I'm not usually drinking Bloody Marys then, but. Yeah, well, he said at one point, he's like, you know what sounds really good to me is a Bloody Mary. I'm like, so get one. They got all the stuff here. I was like, probably. I I mean, I assumed they did, because there are people who just drink Bloody Marys, you know, yeah. whenever. So. It it was delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica makes a good Bloody Mary. Excellent. I mean, it, they didn't have the accoutrements that I normally like in my Bloody Mary, but yeah. that's fine. Yeah. I can't be a fancy gentleman every time. Right. Well, plus, you know, like, at just about every bar makes them their way. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, some are pickle places, some are not, and some are, yeah. you know, um, celery and some, you know, so whatever. So... Unless you just start carrying pickles around with you or something, which would be, be weird. weird. Yeah. He's like, don't mind, I bring my own pickles, <laughs> especially as it's warmer. You know, you're just <laughs> pulling pickles out of like your shorts or something. Here you go. <laughs> like, sir, sir, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm just pulling my pickle out of my pants, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just let it happen. Actual pickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just let it I'm happen. Yep. Yeah. That was, uh, interesting. Oh yeah, man, it was uh, it's a, a good evening at Mommy Bay. I, uh, uh, I you know, until like this moment, because I was this morning when I was feeling like death and trying to recover. I'm like, God, I don't think I drank that much. Completely forgot about the Bloody Mary. Yeah, you, yeah, and she gave us. Uh, I don't remember what that shot was called that we drank. It was a green green tea shot. Yeah, because we we're celebrating tea having a week off, right? <laughs> Which is funny because. When I originally uh, asked Squirrel if he wanted to come out, he was like, sure, but no shots. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing shots. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, 20 minutes of him being there. Yeah. <laughs> Here, have a shot. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the only one we did. It's not like we, you know, we're lining them up all night because that yeah. certainly wasn't my game plan either. Cause... No, 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 no. I Actually, I got way drunker than I was planning. So on did I, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, like, with me, I think it was – uh mainly because of the um the alcohol level of the stuff I was drinking all night. 
Because yeah. a- after I had that uh, Dream of Demon, I switched to Glass Hopper, which that one's not real bad. That's like seven, I think, or something. Yeah, it's like six. a seven. Yeah. yeah. So I had one of those, and I, you know, I told you, I was like, I haven't been drinking much beer the last month, and it's weird because, um, you know, when you're drinking IP, you almost have to really IPA is a tough beer um to get accustomed to because it's so they're especially the ones that are really really hoppy yeah, you know it's like that it's like a punch right to your throat it is and that yeah. one i haven't had much as far as an ipa goes like the beers i have had have not been ipas uh except right. for an occasional all day um so it was a little tougher for me to drink i still was fine with it but i was like wow, it was interesting how my tongue, you know, my palate wasn't as accustomed to IPAs as it had been, you know, right. to where we were doing doubles and occasionally I would drink a triple with you. And I'm like, whoo, I'm going to have to get Speaking it. Speaking of all that, Brian, Chill Wave is right around the corner. Yeah, so I got to get it back in shape for Chill Wave or I'm not going to be able to handle Chill Wave. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, and then after that, I was like, oh, I, um, uh, I was like, let me sample the, um, they had a, was an American strong ale, I think there. Right. And I got a sample of that. And then I was like, yeah, give me one of those. And I just, and that was like, what was that? That was almost a 9%, I think. And then I think I had another something. I can't remember what I switched to after that, but it was like almost everything I had there was around. I think the lowest I had there was the 7%. So you're uh, all drinking high opera. octane stuff. Yeah, so I I, I was pretty, he- you know, heavy on the stuff, and then the whatever the shot was, and I was just like Jesus. I was feeling pretty good by the time we left there for sure. Right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was funny. You know, I went outside with a uh, squirrely, you know, so he could uh, uh, have a quick smook, and uh, I just wanted to go outside because I was getting drunk and. I would, you know, sometimes some fresh air is good for you when you're getting drunk, you know, to it's true. reset yourself a little bit and totally forgot that they have the patio that was like, well, first of all, I wouldn't have had to climb stairs, but well, there's like one, but you know, and right. we're out there and one of the, I think she works up at Rockwell's one of the girls walks out and she's like, you know, there's a patio right outside. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, sorry, man. I totally forgot about that. So, uh, yeah, that was, you know, my bad, but. Well, I almost just completely ate it when I walked out on a patio because I forgot they have that little like step up. Oh yeah. You, like, you get outside and then you have to step up into the patio and I was following T out there, I think, or maybe a squirrel. I don't know. No, and T I, didn't I go just, out there. Yeah. I almost ate it. I tripped. I grabbed the woman. <laughs> That was standing well, right there. That had nothing fall. to do with anything else, but yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, ladies. Yeah. Watch that step. It's killer. Right. <laughs> then move, kept moving. <laughs> if if you've seen Austin Powers, the part where he's like, oh, I've fallen down. I've fallen yeah. down again. Oh, I fell over again. <laughs> That's pretty much Tony. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, let me remove my pickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I, ugh, I felt like a real dick, and that ran shortly after that was when I uh, smacked the waitress in the head. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I don't even know how I got, probably because once I well I, even when I'm completely stone cold sober I flail wildly when I talk sometimes. Yeah, and I I think it gets extra wild when I'm drinking. Yes, I don't even know how I col- I smacked her in the side of the head, but I did when she was walking by. Yeah, it's just she came around the bar and was going to walk to uh, deliver something to a table, and you're just like <laughs> flailing all about and just smack right in the head, and you know, luckily she, you know, she was good. So, you know. oh yeah, I did apologize probably fifty times. Yeah, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you also offered to let her slap you. Um, oh, well, that's not, that doesn't surprise me either. You know, to pay you back for it. And she yeah, was like, take nah. backsies. Right. And I was like, you can use a weapon. And she still said no. So, yeah. Yeah. I was kind of hoping. I was like, you know, maybe she was like a bottle or something. But no. Apparently too nice. Too afraid of losing a job or something. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, my luck. She would, you know, have proper foot placement and hip rotation. <laughs> That'd have been awesome. Yeah. Really leave me out. <laughs> yeah. Be like, hey, look at Tony doing his Ronda Rousey impression. No, he's not arm barring someone. That girl's Holly Holm. 
<laughs> Done. <laughs> um, yeah, that was uh God. I have I have a thing with uh, assaulting waitresses on yeah. accident when I'm drinking. That's every time I've ever knocked a tray of drinks out of a woman's mm-hmm. hand or stuff. It's always when I'm several beers in and just. Well, flailing around while talking it doesn't help that um like there it's a fairly narrow walkway like when if you're at the bar and you turn sideways and you're talking there's not a lot of room to walk there because they have another table right behind where we were at the bar and there's people there their chairs are back a little bit so there's not much room and uh you know, and you know, you're tall enough and she was short enough that it's just, you know, when you're flailing your arms out, you're right at her head level. It's, you know, wouldn't have been so yeah. bad if she was a little taller and you hit her in the shoulder, you know, <laughs> that have to give her the old woo. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's a nice firm, nice. you know, chop across the chest, you know? Yeah. yeah that'd go over real well. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> hit her with the old titty chop. No, I don't mean there. I mean higher, oh. you know, like. <laughs> Just under the neck, but above oh, okay. the breast, this is. Yeah. Br- bruise up the sternum a little. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that was. So, yeah. So, you know, we we're there for a while, and then we decide, uh, you know, it's time to roll out from there. And uh, we decided to uh, roll over to our, you know, our our new favorite place downtown. Well, not our new favorite place, but our other favorite place downtown, which is. Yeah, the, say one of, one of our other haunts. Yeah. The Black Cloister. And, uh, we got there and that place was, uh, pretty full when we got there, which is awesome. It was. But we got there around the time that the hockey game was probably about done. <clears throat> so we were kind of asking for it there. Um, I'm just glad there was a table for us. I was too. Cause I really didn't want to sit at the bar at that point. I was really hoping for a table. Cause well, I, I would have been fine at the bar because seats, but I didn't want to stand at the bar to have like up against the wall. Oh yeah, that too. And I was like, yeah. I was like, that is not what I want to do right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I certainly want didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. So we get we get this table, and I'm I'm really happy we ended up getting the table because by getting the table, we got maybe one of the my favorite servers we've ever had at any establishment. <laughs> if I want to say her name was Alex. Yes. Yeah, or at least she that's what fantastic. you told me because I don't remember. <laughs> but that's what you was, told me it was. Well, I just you know we had so much fun of her that at one point I was just like I had to know like you know what her name was yeah. just to remember it for the next time because mm-hmm. she was a fucking blast. <laughs> yeah, she was, and I just I remember at one point she turned around and just looked at us and we were kind of looking at her because. I think we were I, we were trying to decide if we were going to stay there or go somewhere else. And she just turns around and she's like, what do you fucking want? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was great. <laughs> and we just all just start laughing because, you know, none of us expected that. But it, it was, you know, not in, it was in, in such a way that, you know, all of us were totally receptive to it. It wasn't rude at all. It was just, you know, she she read us correctly, you know. Yeah, she read us perfectly. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was right away. This was after we had been there for a little while and she had talked with us, but it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And she was just giving a shit all night. It was, it was good times. But yeah. It's a mouth like a sailor. Yeah. I was so happy because I was able to finally have a uh, scotch ale, which I haven't had in a while because the places I've been, you know, it's a tough thing to find at a lot of places. You know, a lot of right. places don't really stock a scotch ale basically so i was so happy because i know they have one you know the true scotsman so you know i partook in uh, a couple of those and whew, man just one week away from bourbon barrel age scotsman <sighs> week away hell it's it's available right now well they're i don't know they might be closed now but i should be down there drinking them right now trip. should be drinking them right now tony <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't uh, wait for that. They better not run out of that. I'm gonna be super sad, Panda. Well, we just gotta make sure we get there. Yeah, make it. Yeah, God, just make an evening of it. Yeah, like we're gonna go to the cloister and get some beers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know, as we've talked about, I'm a fan of the Scotch Ale, and they're doing a as as Shannon actually told us about on the Enthusiast when she joined us. 
from the cloister. Right. They're doing a bourbon barrel aged one that wasn't ready in January, but it's ready now. And, uh, unfortunately we were a day, day off. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately is right. So I still got I, to have a delicious scotch ale, but it wasn't this one. So, yeah, I don't remember what beer I got there. I know it was good. It had, um, was it the Rose of Shannon? Oh yeah. It was a like red that? ale. Yeah, yeah. Rose of Shannon. You're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was the red. That was really good too. No, nah, man. The, the one you had after that is the one we got to talk about. Oh though. God. So our lovely, the lovely and talented Alex, I don't even know how it came up in conversation, but she was just like, hey, guys, we have a cider here that's 18%. And I went, yes, please. Yeah, we're <laughs> all, try yeah, all of us are like, ooh, and I'm not a cider guy. So, you know, I've made it pretty clear on the show that I generally feel all ciders should just be pouring down, poured down the, the drain, basically. So... Uh, I was like, you know, no chance. Plus, when she says 18%, in my head, I'm thinking all night. I've been hovering fairly close to 10%. So this is probably going to mean that the front yard is going to wear this cider. So I probably shouldn't <laughs> do this. Right. You know, and Jesse was like, your squirrel was like, no. You know, and T was like, ye. you know, and Tony, of course, is like, yes. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> it was only a little five ounce pour, but it was more than enough. Yeah. And I mean, I think we all took a nip off. Well, I know Jesse and I did. I don't know if T did, but I, I think I'll, I think everybody yeah. took a taste and I finished it off. And that was honestly what put me under for the rest of the night. Oh man, I, that. that one sip I took of it, and I was like, "Whoo!" Because you I mean, know what? It, it it almost it, reminds you if you've had like legit moonshine, the burn from it, but it had a much better taste because it's yeah, I'll say you know it. it, it for a cider, it wasn't that bad. It was it wasn't that sweet, probably because the you know yeast yeah. converted all the sugars to yeah. alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, Skype, calm down here. It, it, it tastes like eighteen percent. Oh, it certainly did. Are like, we skyping problem? Yeah, a little bit here. So yeah, it certainly did taste like an eighteen percent though. Like as soon as it hit my mouth i was like oh man <laughs> like glad i'm not drinking even the five ounces of it it's which like is warm. what was that it was like warm and still a little apple-y yeah but it wasn't terrible but i i i'm good if one taste yeah that's certainly not something a... you you want to make a habit of drinking i mean maybe like on the night no. you're like i'll have a glass of it like one five ounce of it and that's all i'm having <laughs> Yeah, I mean it was uh wow. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's I, I blame that last glass of liquid on my Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that and the stupid spring forward nonsense. Yeah, losing our blows. Yeah, see, it only blows for people who have to get up early. Otherwise, you that's don't like. I didn't even notice it because I I sleep late enough that I don't notice it. So. It, you know, well, I didn't notice until I got into my Jeep because Jeannie got up and she switched all the clocks, you know, phone switch automatically. Right. You know, so I didn't even notice until I got in my Jeep and I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, that's why. Yeah. Because you know? I, when I got up this morning, I, I looked at my phone. I'm like, God damn, I haven't slept in this late in forever. Right. <laughs> and it's just because Jeannie's awesome because she was meeting uh, one of her friends this morning for coffee at like nine. Mm. But she got up at like five some or whatever when the dog got up because she's like she told me later, yeah the dog was on like paws on the bed barking at you and I didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> so she got up with with dummy and you know yeah took care of all that and, and I just was, I was just dead to the world. Right. I didn't get up bed till like eleven. I don't doubt it because you slept most of the way most of the car ride to your house last yeah. night. Cause T I remember dropping Jesse off, and I woke up we're on my road. Yeah, because uh, yeah, we we tr well, yeah, we dropped Jesse off at his car, and then uh, T and I were talking, and then at one point we said T said something to you, and then I did, and I looked back, and I was like, oh, it looks like he's sleeping. And then a little bit later, we said something to you too, and I was like, yeah, he's out. <laughs> So, and then, like, right before we pulled into your driveway, I think you, like, answered one of us or said something, and we were like, oh, yeah, good timing. So. Well, you, you know what woke me up? No. Was I felt like I was going to just yak. Uh. Like, I had that, like, 
that mouth watering. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, that awful feeling. And I'm like, mother. And I realized where I was at. And I'm like, oh, I'm close to home. Just hold on. I'm doing like breathing <laughs> exercises. Like I'm back there doing yoga. Right. You could do it. And I ended up not nothing. Well, that's yeah, good. I ended up being yeah. fine. I'll tell you. When I finished my uh, scotch ale at uh, Cloister, because I kind of chugged the last bit of it, when the last sip of it got into my mouth and I finished it, I was like, done. Like, that second, I I hit that point, you know, and I was like, uh, you know, and I'm like, if I have any more to, you know, alcohol, it's all coming back, so... And I was like, wow, I don't think I've felt like that in a while. And it had to be because it was such heavy stuff most of the night that I was full. Plus, it was fairly strong. And that combination was just, you know. Just almost put it over the top. Almost. Huh? Yeah. If I had had one more drink, I probably would have been a mess. So I was like, right. yeah, it's time to stop. Which was good because it was time anyway. So we were. You know, yeah. I mean. We had to anyways because they were closing. Quite a- yeah. I mean, it was, they closed at midnight, so we, well, I was probably home by 1, I would guess. Something like that, because I think it was about yeah. 1, almost, not quite one thirty when I got home. It was like one twenty or something like that, so right, it was around that time, yeah. Because that's when, when Jeannie got home from her coffee, she's like, um, so when did you get home? I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got me. God, I don't know. I'm like, here, though. <laughs> man, I don't know. I don't even know how I got inside. Uh, no. <laughs> Well, it's like I remember I I came inside and I was like I thought I was gonna throw up, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. So I I pounded a pint of water because you know we have pint glasses everywhere in our house. Right. So I, I put you know put down some water, and then uh, you know I just yeah made stumble my way into bed. That's all I remember. Yeah, that I was woke up and she was gone. I didn't know where my phone is at. She, it was actually plugged in on her side of bed because I didn't plug it in. Oh right. So I was like, oh, love her for that because I was. I woke up looking around like, fuck, I don't know where my phone's at. Right, yeah. Hopefully it's in the house somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I was a little afraid of drinking water when I got home because of, you know, like I said, I kind of, it was like full, you know, like, right. I'm like, ah, man, because, you know, sometimes when you're having that, you're at that iffy point, like water can tip the scale too. And I was like, I got to put some water in me. Like, you know what, if it makes me yak, it makes me yak, you know, because, <laughs> If if I'm I'm that close and I yak, I'll feel better anyway. So you know, right. but luckily it didn't. I drank a bunch of water. I drank whatever what thirty two ounces is in this bottle. I pretty much just straight down, and I was like, oh, I feel so much better. So I should have I should have put a, a spacer in there some point in the night, and I never did. So yeah, same here, Brian. Honestly, same that's here. probably what I should have done. Like before we left. Uh, uh, mutts. I probably should have been like, let me get a water before we go. <laughs> I got water to go. Like yeah. we used to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you're going around the corner. Stuff. Yeah. I know, but I need a water. Oh, uh, yeah. the, the worst part was, cause I just wanted to stay in bed just cause I felt like fucking death. But I already told everybody that I was making bolognese sauce, yeah. which is like a long process. Right. And I needed to go to the store and buy some stuff. Right. I'm like, fuck. Uh, Jeannie still wasn't home yet, so I was like, fuck, can't send her out, you know. <laughs> so I ended up getting up and just stumbling around Kroger's like the goddamn patient zero of you know re- fear to Walking Dead. Right. So you go and to the store, was... you buy some bologna and mayonnaise to make the bolognese sauce. That sounds God, awful. It does sound terrible. Oh my! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was. I, I normally like go grocery shopping. I'm like on point, you know. Yeah, I know exactly what I'm there to get. Uh, boom, 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 done. So I can get the fuck out of there. Right. This it was not that today. I was like, oh, I need to get deadly meat for everyone's lunches, and I was there for like 20 minutes because it was so fucking busy. Right. Then it's like. Oh, that's right. I need to get this. Oh, oh and I was like zigzagging every. Oh god, I felt so out of sorts. Right. And then I was, you know, stood in the aisle staring at coconut water for ten minutes trying to figure out what I wanted. <laughs> that was a full of sugar. <laughs> I was just like, I need to get the hell out of here. Right. And it was, yeah. I mean, I got home and I started, you know, preparing the sauce and I smashed my coconut water and ate a couple slices of deli chicken because yeah. I was hungry. 
Right. And that's when I decided to throw everything up. <laughs> it was horrible. I didn't feel amazing afterwards. But yeah. Well, that's usually like, what really? it is. It's like, it's like noon. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's why usually, like, in the past when I'd get to that point to where I'm like, man, I'm going to throw up five, one more drink. Usually I'll just be like, screw it and just have one more drink, you know? Because it's like, I, you just feel so much better once you purge, basically. Right. That it, it's just you know like rather than because otherwise like if i stop it's like i'm gonna feel awful for hours or i could just go ahead and get sick like i'm not like sticking my finger down my throat to get sick but it's like i'll just have another drink and that'll usually just put me over the you know catalyst yeah and it's like then i get sick i feel awful for like 10 15 minutes and then i'm i'm great you know so it's not something i want to do because i i hate getting sick but it's like I'd also, I also hate feeling like hot death for like eight hours, you know? So right. at some point I'm just like, eh, nuts to this, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. let's just do a shot. Oof. That'll fix my problem. Who's got tequila? <laughs> yeah. Th- th- this morning was one of those mornings where I woke up and I was like, that was, it's, that's so much fun, but why do I do this to myself occasionally? And then, and then I'm like, and how do people, how do people that are like alcoholics wake up feeling like this every day? Yeah. Well, they just you chase know? it with more booze. Yeah. You know? But I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. Man, sure. I always have a blast, but the, that next, you know, eight hours of recovery or whatever is just yeah. like, like I still don't feel, my head still feels a little fucked up. Yeah. Like I like said, I mine does too, but I, and, you know, yeah. I think mine's just sinuses. I don't, I think I'm pretty good otherwise. I just, oh man. So I said, I have to, you know, I think mine has to do with, like I said years ago, just, you know, the post game thing. As long as I get enough water and some sort of a carb in my stomach, usually I'm golden the next day or pretty close. But we got rain and whatnot today. So my sinuses are messed up. I think that's the only reason I have a headache or I was probably snoring like a fool. That'll do it too. Because when I, you know, drink too much and, you know, pass out, I'd snore. So, well, let me tell you, Brian, I've been, you know, uh, because he said carbs in your stomach, I've been, you know, Johnny no carb for a while now. Yeah. I, I went, I wilded it out today, buddy. <laughs> Do you, you have know, a cracker? I, made, I, made a, oh. huh? I said, would you have a cracker? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, I had two. <laughs> like, whoa. No. Like, bitch, I'm getting crazy over yeah. here. Two saltines, count Damn. them. No, uh, well, because I made the bolognese sauce, and I, you know, I'm like, I'm making a nice meal for it because I like cooking dinner for the family. It's been a while because, you know, now, well, now that Jeannie's got a new job, we'll be figuring it out. But for yeah. a while, she was making all the dinners, right? And uh, so, you know, I made the the sauce, which is like an eight hour process, and it's it was delicious. And mm. I made like fucking pasta, and you know, uh, uh. You know, made garlic bread. You know, I did the works. Yeah. And then I ate it all. And it was delicious. <laughs> and um, I'm sure I might feel like garbage tomorrow morning as a, a usual eh, it's worth it. thing. But half the time, it's like when you make it, you know what's in it. So that might be a, might be a little bit better. Yeah. Eh, it's worth it for I mean, this. I didn't bake the bread, but I did make the pasta because we have the tools to do it. Might as well. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's that. Yeah. And it's. It's, it's so it's I mean people are like oh my god it's really not that hard to do you just gotta have the right tools for it right you know mm-hmm. yeah like an old Italian woman that you just have make the pasta yeah it's exactly yeah. I got her locked up in the basement <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like all right time to make some more pasta yeah get up here you it's like the stairs are hard on my knees <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> my hands even harder on your face. <laughs> Do you want me to drag you up the steps again? Your hair is not as soft as that bartender I slapped. <laughs> Probably not. Her hair did look soft. It was very soft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. So, yeah. So anything else from, from last night? That's all I had from it. No, I mean, it was a uh, it was a great time. And we, uh, we, we haven't had a... a guys night out slash growler night in a long time. It was, it felt good. Yeah. It was good times. <laughs> Apparently, uh, you know, Squirrel's wife, Michelle, was uh, worried for some reason. That we might kill her... him? No. no. Oh. Well, her and Jeannie went out, mm. you know. 
after she had a beer with me, she left and met her and they, you know, had a, had a drink somewhere and got, had like a little bit of food or whatever. And, uh, I guess she kept telling Jeannie like, Oh God, I hope, I hope he doesn't do anything that's going to get those guys mad or get Tony mad. She's, she worries way too much about him. Okay. Yeah. No. Because she's always telling me, he's like, ah, he's an asshole. I'm like, yeah, so are we. We all are. Yeah. No, he didn't do anything. I think, I don't, I think he had a blast of us and I had fun with him. Yeah. uh, Yeah. And it's, uh, I don't know what she was worried about. Yeah. I don't know. We all seem to have a good time as far as I know anyway. yeah, Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, uh. I'm so, you know, I personally am hard to piss off. Mm-hmm. You have to know the right combination, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good luck to you. Right. Trying but to for- force. I uh... have words for tomorrow at work. Be like, so why are you so worried? Yeah, right. You know, I don't get it. Right. Speak if he's such an asshole, why'd you marry him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, burn. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh. Nah, it's cool. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, so I got like two two story things for the week here. So All right, lay it on me. All right, so the first one affects us a little bit. Oh, okay. although it doesn't because we're just going to laugh at it. Um, there's a, a scientist at the University of Innsbruck in Austria have uncovered that uh, if you are a fan of bitter drinks such as IPAs, Negronis, uh, was it Boulevardy, or I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever, but you're also more likely to exhibit uh, malevolent personality traits. The same is true if you crave black coffee or tonic water. Basically, you're a psycho. Now, I'm speaking to a man who likes his coffee black, enjoys mixed drinks with, (laughs) he enjoys a... Uh, you know, tonic water, uh, in his mixed drinks and likes IPAs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all, uh, these is scientists, all these scientists are calling you a psycho. Do you have a response to them? <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> I, uh, I disagree. I don't feel psycho. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think people that, Drink shitty watered down beers or psycho, <laughs> right? <laughs> and put coffee and cream and coffee or coffee, coffee and coffee in their coffee, Brian. Uh, well, sugar and cream in their coffee. Listen, I think that's crazy too. Coffee and coffee. I mean, I could see people doing that. You know, what do you think of them apples, mm-hmm. bitter people, or whatever? Yeah, I. It just kind of made me laugh. The hypothesis was that uh, of their thing is that our taste preferences develop very early in life, just as our personality traits do, and that perhaps the scientists could identify a correlation between the flavors we enjoy and our unique personality traits. I think it's probably not the case because there's so many people that like black coffee and IPAs and all that that I really don't think are psychopaths. You know, right. I mean, to be a legitimate psychopath, you are on a really small end of a rainbow, you know, to be a fan of an IPA or black coffee, you're on a part of a really large rainbow. So you may have crossovers just because that's how math works. But I don't know that one dictates the other, you know, that seems like you're really grasping at something there. So. I just thought it was kind of a funny thing. I know this, there was one of these stories a while ago about coffee and psychopaths. So, you know. I mean, could it be because the caffeine coursing through your veins? <laughs> right. Yeah, I work with a, a guy that drinks coffee nonstop, and the way he just marches around the office, sometimes I want to go out there with like a Hulk Hogan big leg. You know, oh, that'd be awesome. Just catch him as he's flying around. That'd be ridiculous. He's coming through like he's ultimate warrior and you just catch him with the big boot and then drop Fuck the yeah. leg. Big boot, baby. Get the one, two, three count, but the ref's out so you don't get it. Oh, then he hits you with the gorilla press and covers you for one, two, three and becomes the first guy to ever have the intercontinental and world heavyweight championship. Oh, shit. <sighs> I think and it's all work. And you're all forever shamed. Yeah. For, forever shamed. Forever. <laughs> all right. So enough of that. I just, like I said, it was just, you know, I more so wanted to make fun of them than I did anything else. Right. That's, I think that's horseshit. Right. You know, it's not horseshit. 
is What's that? a rolling uh, this is from Rolling Stone and I've seen it other places too but it should Columbus Ohio build a macho man Randy Savage statue Oh jeez are you kidding me that's so not horseshit right Oh my god and my my fingers are doing terrible walking That's what mine were doing Man, there we go. Mine were doing that last night. Uh, it's been nearly five years since wrestling icon Macho Man Randy Savage. This should say Hall of Famer Macho Man Randy Savage. Died. I agree. In that time, he's been immortalized by WWE Hall of Fame, Slim Jim Manufacturer, ConAgra Foods, and uh, Black Ops 3. Now, one fan says it's time Savage's hometown of Columbus, Ohio does the same thing with the statue. Um, earlier this week, a man named Joe Chapman launched a change.org petition, which we'll have the link in the show notes, asking Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther to honor the city's native son, an incredible athlete, performer, and cultural icon, by placing a statue of him in downtown Columbus. And seriously, it needs to be one where he's got, like, his arms out with a big, like, you know, drape, draping uh, shirt thing on, you know? Oh, I agree. Yeah. Either that's Damn. like where he's pointing, or where he's like pointing to the sky right before he drops the elbow or something. Fuck exactly, amazing. Or or do you need to have like just Macho Man gargoyles on the corners of buildings. I was just gonna say, or have like four of them. So yeah, that would yep. be yeah. I'm totally in. So yeah, uh, at the moment, Chapman's petition is this is as of when this was published, uh, 397 signatures, but his goal is to get 500. Um, before you roll your eyes, consider that Columbus is already home to an Arnold Schwarzenegger statue unveiled in 2012 in recognition of what Arnold has done in this community, uh, most notably his long-running Arnold Sports Festival held in the city every year since 1989. Oh, I was like, why did it have an Arnold? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, they, now it does. Yeah, they have a huge – it's it's a massive, like, uh, bodybuilding. Is that what the Arnold uh, – what the hell do they call it? The, it's just, uh, God damn it, like the bodybuilding competition is? Where, yeah, like, yeah. Is, the, is it in Columbus? Yes. It's, it God used damn. to just be like the Arnold Classic, which I think was just bodybuilding, but I think it's That's expanded think, into, yeah, it's expanded even into even more stuff now. So from what I understand, it's a really large uh, festival now. Hmm. Yeah, I knew That's you'd cool. be on board, so I just wanted to make sure, you know, we're putting this oh. out there for everybody else. Hmm. I mean, Columbus doesn't have a Macho Man statue. Mm. Because it's mind-boggling to you, yeah. Right. It is mind-boggling. Right. Now, the only thing dangerous about this is it clearly would be more seductive than sex. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, yeah. More seductive than sex. Now. But the statue will be. The cream of the crop. Absolutely. Now, I just yeah. looked at the link to this, and as of that article he was close to 500 signatures currently he needs 583 signatures to reach 5,000 oh, so nice yeah so obviously we need you know to get all the people we can to sign this because well, why not absolutely because there's no reason or sh I mean every city should have a macho man statue I agree I agree I'd like to put one in my front yard but I don't know if I'm allowed to <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that. Yes. You'd have to like bolt it down and chain it down. Oh, for sure. Someone would steal it. Around it, barbed wire and dogs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That shit would be vanishing. Yeah, I know. That's you the come over to my house, like, hey, my macho man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's you'd be the first person I would, you know, suspect of stealing it too. So yeah. naturally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are the uh, two news stories I had for the week. But I, you know, very, the second one was the important one. You know, obviously. Oh, for sure. Because we already know we're psycho, yeah, yeah. That is uh, that is fantastic, mm -hmm. to be honest. Well, I guess what are we at at the Q to W already, Brian? Yeah, I believe that's where we is are, that, sir. Is, is that where we're at already? Yes, sir. Unless you got All something right. else. I I do not. Okay, well then, yeah. I guess so. So. Last week's was a food related one. It was hey, if you want to see a meal dish. Whatever. Pass along to future generations. What would it be? Well, we have plenty of answers on the face page. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Clint from various podcasts. He's on everything. <laughs> right. Most notably Geek Dig. Uh, says, my three bean salad. It's fucking epic. 
No, it's got it's got to be pretty. Three beans to doctor up three beans to make them epic. Mm-hmm. That's saying something. I know, right? I know. So that's I I, I got to give it to him. Mm-hmm. I bet the secret ingredients love. It could be. Mm-hmm. Could be man love. Yes. Yes. Just never mind. It's getting <laughs> gross. Um, uh, Chris Richardson. I'm. I think he's friends with Big Dev. I want to say. Okay. Yeah, I think he, that's that's the family he comes from. All right. Uh, and you, uh, beans on toast tastes great. I've never tried such a thing. Did he say what kind of beans? I mean, I'm assuming like baked beans probably, or I don't know. Just beans on toast. That seems like an English type of food. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Cause I, guess I, could, beans I guess I could ask. Breakfast. I am on the face page. Yeah. I'm just curious. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to put, so this is live. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're curious. Do to do. I'm so used to typing on my iPhone that my punctuation is suffering. Yeah, that'll happen. Now we're curious. Dot 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 dot. What type of beans? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could insert like dramatic music too. Right. Man beans. Man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man <laughs> beans on toast. Ah. Seems spooky. Like, huh? Uh, Jared from Ridiculous Ramblings says, My baked chicken stuffed with spinach and pepper jack cheese topped with Cajun seasoned breadcrumbs. That sounds all right, my yeah, friend. Yep. Yeah. So when, come, when we're coming to crash at your place, you know you're making us for dinner. Right. Absolutely. Man beans on toast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Man beans on toast. <laughs> like, damn it. <laughs> uh, big dev of snake oil and of a shot of history. Check oh. it out. It's pretty good. Um, Says, my salsa or crock pot pulled pork. And then Big Oz. Big Oz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the? We'll call him Big Oz. It's all right. All right. Big Oz, our Australian friend, says, my chili rel- chili relanos, which I am a big fan of those. Mm-hmm. So if, if once, like the Jared thing, when I go to Australia, I fully expect chili rel- relanos. Mm-hmm. Probably not even pronouncing it right. Probably, I don't think delicious. you are. Yeah. I also had a late entry. I got a frenzied text from our friend Neil from Daft Pie. <laughs> a frenzied text. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, my God, did I forget? I forgot about the Q to W. Is it too late? And I'm like, no, you're fine. Uh, he is. He would like to see Mama's empanada recipe passed on. Nice. Like Mama from Mama's family? I I can only assume because that's the only Mama I know. Like Vicky I Lawrence has empanadas. an empanada recipe. She was, like, viciously racist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, poor Vicky Lawrence. No respect. <laughs> so that's oh that's all we had from the face page in the frenzy text field. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, over on uh, the Twitter machine, uh, Mr. Uh, Doug Lingerie sent us uh, one that says, Uncle Eugene Skittle and Ruffy Pie. We always had it when we stayed in his crawl space, which sounds terrifying, but, you know. All right. Terrifying yet home, homely and right, stuff. Right. Uh, and then your wife uh, sent one in that said she wants her kids to know how to make her biscuits and sausage gravy, which I can certainly understand passing on. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure in future generations that'll be used as like currency. It's so good. <laughs> let's see. That was all from uh, Twitter this week. Let's see. What do I have here? Uh, Fluffy Bunny Ash said that she has a whole box of recipes. That have been passed down through the uh, families. If she had to pick one, it would be her grandma's pierogies. Uh, she said from her boyfriend's side, it would be his grandpa's, I hope I pronounce this right, Pelichinka, Eastern European crepes. And from her girlfriend's oh. side, her family's tomato sauce. All recipes that have been passed down through multiple generations of family already. Which Very is awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome that, you know, everybody's got those kind of things. And then, let's see, I know I have another one. Ah, there it is. Uh, This is part one from our pal uh, Cheeto Bandito. And he says, what dish would I want to pass on? Revenge. It's a dish that's best served cold, by the way. (laughs) Seriously, though. What? I said it's true. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Seriously, though, it would probably be more of an art than a dish. Making a homemade bechamel sauce or any other, (laughs) quote, mother sauce uh, insert dirty mother sauce joke here <laughs> can be very useful and quite versatile. 
<laughs> I think I could make a pretty banging bechamel and use it for various dishes. It may seem like a simple thing, but being able to do the simple things perfectly makes all the difference in food, in my opinion. 100% agree. You know, yeah, like Tony was sure. talking about the, the bolognese sauce. You know, it takes forever to do it, but it's not a horribly complicated sauce. It's just you have to put the time and the love into it. So, you know. Exactly. But when it's executed perfectly, you know. As, uh, as my man Action Bronson says. Fuck, that's delicious. Right. Um, And then uh, part two from Cheeto was, if I could add something to my what recipe you'd want to pass on reply, it would be potato candy. If you haven't heard of it, check into it. It's a poor people's sweet that my grandmother used to make. Simple, rustic, entirely too sweet, but it's so good. I have say potato candy? He certainly did. I have never heard of this, so I will certainly look into this. Huh. I have never heard it either. Yeah. Me, nope, nope, never heard of it. And I, potato uh, candy. Yeah. Now I'm curious. I know. So. I kind of wish you would have included a recipe. I know, right? Yeah. What a jerk. I mean, hey. It's true. <laughs> How dare he? I'm typing in potato candy right now because I'm curious. Oh, wow, there's a lot of hits for it. Jeez. Old-fashioned mashed potato candy recipe. Really? It combines mashed potatoes, milk, vanilla extract, and salt in a bowl. Huh. Wow. Interesting. That is something, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. All right, then. Um, I'm going to look into this a little bit more. I'm not going to do it while we're doing this because it will take entirely too much time, but... So thanks for that. That's something I'll look into because that may be something we might give a go to at some point. Cause yeah, why not, right? it's really different. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, yeah. So what's this week's Q the W? Well, we're, this is, uh, we're doing Jeopardy rules on this one, Brian. Ah, damn it. Yeah. 2.5 million is the answer. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really odd question or uh, answer to give. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Damn it. Oh, uh, wow. 2.5 million is the question. That was the answer. Or What's answer. The question? That's what I meant. Sorry. See, I'm already yeah. terrible at this. Why do you think I haven't been on Jeopardy yet? O- other than not being I smart tried, enough. I tried to get you on, but, you know, you you want to keep your pickle out of your pants. Nope. <laughs> What they have the thing in front of me? What they don't need to worry about what's going on behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I kept trying to use my pickle as the other contestant's buzzer. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me. Yeah, <laughs> you're just you're on like a step stool and you're just standing right next to them, like where their buzzer would be, and they're like, ah, <laughs> yeah, do you really <laughs> like what? You don't like pickles. <laughs> Uh, Alex Trebek keeps yelling at you. What's that? I said Alex Trebek keeps yelling at you to get down and oh yes, know, get back to your side of the. I don't even know what that thing's called. Uh, podium, I guess. Maybe it's all like one thing, so I don't know. I, I don't know. Whatever it is. Yeah, I anyway, have no idea. Two point five is the answer. What's the question? Two point five million is the answer. I don't know. There's an uncomfortable silence, though. Um, <laughs> we like uncomfortable silences. Sometimes they're perfect for the effect. A pregnant pause, if you will. Um, pregnant pause. Yeah. I I don't I don't know, Tony. Do you have something for this? Um, I would have to say that if the answer is two point five million, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I do believe the question should be, how much should Brian and Tony make monthly podcasting? <laughs> That's pretty good. 2.5 million. That's pretty good. So step it up, Amazon shopper. <laughs> okay, so here's here's my answer then is, uh, what is a good start for money uh, to fund a wizard tower? Ah, the old wizard tower. Because <laughs> we haven't referenced the wizard tower in a while. Do we have any idea what an episode that originally aired on? Not a clue. <laughs> I I think the Wizard Tower thing might have started on a pod, goddammit. 
I know we referenced it very oh, heavily right. in one of those. Like, what would we do with something? On the upside, those are all really short, so you could comb through those quickly. But uh, God, yeah. I, f- I think you are correct that it was a pod guy. Yeah, because I just put in Wizard Tower in our on our Libsyn page in the search, hoping, and there's nothing. Yeah, and those aren't hosted by us. Although I, well, I can't now. I was going to say I could put them all up, but I I can't because I don't have oh, access yeah, right. to them. Yeah, I did, but uh, anyway. So uh, there you go. There's your question of the week or your answer of the week, I guess this one is. <laughs> oh, burn. Wait. So, um, all right. So, do we have anything else? Or are we wrapping her up now? Uh, I, th- I think I'm about wrapped up, my friend. All right. Well, let's finish it up then. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, next week uh, should be interesting for us. We're hitting, uh, we're heading out to Chicago. Going to hit the old C2E2 convention. Uh, so if you're listening and you're going to be there, let us know, uh, you know, if, it, you know, maybe we can smack you in the face with one of our stickers or something. And, uh, it's true. cause I referenced it's that true. heavily last night, but, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and otherwise go to saltylanguage.com, you know, for the show links and other episodes and all sorts of good time shenanigans, uh, various videos and whatnot. Um, and while you're there, you know, if you are planning on uh, shopping on Amazon, swing by the website and uh, click the Amazon banner and then shop away. It doesn't cost you anything extra. They send us a couple shekels for uh, uh, referring traffic, if you would. Or if you'd like to, you know, become a Patreon subscriber, you could, uh, you know, there's a link for that there also. Um, and then... Also at the bottom of our page are the networks we're part of, uh, such as Pod Gods Network, Tangent Bound Network, uh, Wicked Radio Network, uh, Geek Life Radio, and hmm, feels like there's one I'm forgetting. The Wicked 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 Danger, watch your back, Danger. There it is. Entertainment. There it is. There it is. Yep. So, uh, there's that. If you want to send in a Q of the W, uh, you know, uh, please, uh, use hashtag Q of the W if you're doing it on Twitter so it's easier for us to find. If you're, if you want to email it to us, you can send that to saltylanguage at gmail.com. Or if you have a suggestion for the Q of the W for us, you know, please email it there. That way it's, you know, it's all hush hush and secret. <laughs> Naturally. Um, top secret. And, uh, yeah, if you want to contact us, you can hit us up on, uh, the Twitter at salty underscore language, or you can find me at Stunami. I am at Monotony. Yep. Uh, you can find us on the Instagrams at, was it, it's just salty language on there, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, check out the YouTubes page at salty language pod and, uh, anything else? I think that's, uh, If you're on the Facebooks, check us out at uh, facebook.com slash salty language and uh, give us a like over there if you would to help us out. Just uh, search salty language in your social media search bar of choice. Odds are we're there somewhere. Boom. And if you would like to join our kit group and have various conversations with us and some of our friends, uh, just hit us up and we can add you to it. Or there's uh, over on our Twitter, I believe it is, or Facebook, there's uh, the QR code or whatever right. it's called, kick code, sorry, if you, yeah. you, know, you can scan. So uh, I think that's it. Um, just because I'm, I'm scrolling through the old damage right now. Yeah. Uh, I want to say the Wizard Tower has got to be either what period of time would you like to live in? Because mm-hmm. that would be ripe for having a Wizard Tower. Or uh, if you had one wish. Hmm. Okay. Because, yeah, because none of the other ones seem like they're, I mean, uh, the classic one, I don't think we were on this one, but we did release it to ours. If you're an animal, what animal would you be? Because that's where we had the dragon with <laughs> raptor feet or whatever. Yes, yes. Where it wasn't. And not like raptor feet, like a velociraptor, like velociraptors as feet. Yes, yes. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was a classic. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, though, the Wizard Tower thing. I don't remember where it started, though. That's a damn shame. We'll have to go back and listen and see if we can find it, though, and because that was good times. 
Um, yes. All right. So best of. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, yeah. I think that's it, though, right? Well, just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're. I think you know we're about spent on our plugs. I mean, if we talk for our fifteen minutes and get past our refractory period, we could put more <laughs> plugs out there. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's not do that. Let's just bask in the afterglow for a little bit. Okay, fair. <laughs> we'll let the listeners try to find their their under things, you know, and just anticipate next time. So <laughs> we promise, Indeed. baby. We'll call you. We'll we'll call you next time. We promise. Oh wait, hold on. Before we go, I okay. got some notifications. Never mind. I was hoping uh, Chris Richardson here would answer. Oh, okay. What type of beans on toast? Oh, so, fair enough. Stay tuned till next week for the bean answer of your day or whatever. <laughs> bean cast presented by Salty Language. Fair enough. And in the meantime, uh, stay or have a beer. You'll be fine. Whew, I'm all over the place. Stay salty. And because you said in the meantime, I know I have space hog in my head. You're welcome. And uh, uh, go enjoy some uh, bolognese. And again, that's bologna and mani. It's <laughs> just mushed together. Yeah, it's just... Uh, <laughs> And you need like a high power blender, and you just mix it for eight hours. That's what Tony was yeah, doing. It's just the blender, just <laughs> on the just slowest setting, straight. slow, slow. Just remember, yeah. that's well, it's because you know the once the bologna and the mayonnaise combine, <laughs> and it gets like it's almost like bologna mayonnaise whipped cream. You know, it's like light and airy. <laughs> oh man! All right, and then you spread it on toast, oh, like God. beans. With beans, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're done. <laughs>